guys, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for being here again one more time. Thank you for subscribing and just being part of this family, the family of Jesus. I appreciate you. You know, I surely do. All right, so today, um, today's video is actually off of a, um, a DM on Instagram. Um, and this person is asking, hi, please, I wanted to ask for advice with regards staying focused on God during prayer or waiting on him in stillness. Thanks. And we're going to jump into it because that's something that I struggled with a lot especially um, when I was about 17 18 years old like I wanted I truly wanted God I wanted to be in his presence but my mind would always wonder I'd be thinking about the drama I watched or the movie I just watched only only when I wanted to just talk to God that's when I struggle with thoughts so here we go I hope this blesses you don't forget to leave a like a thumbs up is that the same? Like, thumbs up, and subscribe. All right, let's jump into it. So the first thing I will say is don't be in a distracting environment. If you're trying to spend time with God and you're in a place, maybe you share a room with four other people or two other people, um, it might help to not be in a distracting environment. Something I do personally is I take walks. I remember when I used to share a room with my sister growing up, and I wanted to spend time with God, I would leave the room. <laughs> like, I would just go outside, walk, you know, in the subdivision, or just be on the deck um, at the back of the house, or even downstairs in the living room where no, when nobody was there, I would use that. Another thing that helps is to also not try to have quiet time or have that time with God um, during the day. I'm a proponent of you speaking to God, being in communion with God throughout the entire day. But you know what I mean when you have that block of time where you just want to be still and just be in the presence of God. It's not a good time to do it during the day because during the day, someone is mowing their lawn, someone is screaming. Whereas if you do it probably in the middle of the night or very early in the morning, people aren't awake. So that's something I've had to do is just to be conscious of the fact that I need to wake up a little bit early while everybody's sleeping. In my house, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m., people are still in bed, legit. Like I'm usually the only one up at that time. Once in a while, somebody might be up with me, but I'm usually the only one up if I want to be in the room and have quiet time or just be in the presence of God that's the best time for me is during that block of time from 7 a.m. 8 a.m. cars are already wheezing they're going to work just you know think about that am I in a distracting environment do I need to wake up a little bit early? Another thing that I will say is you have to train your thoughts. You have to train your mind. Um, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 10, verse 4 to 5, it says the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they're mighty through God. So they're pulling down of strongholds, casting down. To cast down, legit, is to throw down, push down, like cast it down, casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing every thought, like we make every thought give up and obey Jesus. That's a different translation. But that's something that I've had to work on. And I will say that you should try doing because it's the thoughts. You know, when you want to be in the presence of God, that's when you're like thinking about all the things you have to do for the day. You're thinking about the paper you have to finish, the work deadline you need to complete. There are so many things that the devil can use as a distraction during that space of time that could be completely wasted if you don't get in the habit of training your thoughts. I want you to know that you have the power to bring it down. You have the power to train your thoughts. The Bible also says that he will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on him. So one thing I always confess to myself as I'm going into his throne or going into his presence is my wife. God will keep you in perfect peace because your mind is stayed on Jesus. So my wife, this is the time for your mind to, to be stayed on Jesus. Now I speak to you mind. I just speak to myself. I speak to you self. I speak to you Olua my wife. I'm speaking to your spiritual man and I'm saying my wife, keep your mind on Jesus. Keep your heart on Jesus. Be focused and we press it on Jesus. The person that I recommend um, if you want to learn more about harnessing your emotions or bringing your thought life into subjection um, is Andrew Womack. He's le legit. He's the only person I'm recommending for this segment. Andrew Womack, Andrew Womack. He has so many preaching, so many books. Um, I read two of his books this week, um, The Power of Imagination and Don't Limit God. And it has to do with thoughts and thought life. So definitely 
go check him out bring your thoughts down make it give up make it obey Christ so when I'm in the presence of God I cannot thank you right now I'm sorry I will not thank you and it's coming back and doing it again, which leads me to my next point is keep coming back, keep showing up. Because I was thinking about it when I got the question. I'm like, how did, how did God help me with this? And honestly, that was the biggest answer for me was I continued. I stayed there. I was rooted down like... I will still show up, God, I'm giving you this time. I am tithing this time to you. This is the best part of my day and I'm offering it to you as a sacrifice. So when I come here and think about stuff, I'm still going to show up. Another thing that might help is to fast about it. The Bible says, is this not the fast that I've proclaimed to loose the bands of the weekend, to do this? If you are really struggling in that area and you can see that the enemy is actually out for blood, the enemy is out for the jugular, he's trying to take you down. Every Every time you go in there, you're thinking about stuff. Devil, I resist you. I resist you over my quiet time. I resist you over my 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 time with Jesus. You're defeated. You might need to fast food, fast movies. If that's what pops up in you or head when you're trying to spend time with Jesus, it might be movies or conversations or Instagram or social media. You might need to fast something. I have two more, two more, um, two more points, and we go, we go and round it up. Um, but another thing that I will say is what my dad told me um, years ago was, Maiwa, there's a demand on Jesus. Um, he took me back to the scriptures in Genesis. He was like, who initiated this race? Who was the one who said, let's create man in our own image? And I read through it. Tr truly, I mean, we weren't on the scene. We had not appeared. It was God who said, come, let's create man in our own image, in our own likeness. You understand? So my dad was just like, don't forget because there's a place where we get and we, come, we can become so religious and we're faith in everything. We're like, no, I have to spend time with God. No, no. By faith. Now, I understand there's a portion and there's, you have your own part to play, but the demand is placed on Jesus. I remember in the book of 1 Kings, when Solomon was praying, um, when the temple was dedicated, I love that prayer. And when I spoke at Yazim, that was a scripture that I spoke on. Lord, turn my heart towards you. Give me the desire to be in your presence. You want this more than I want this. And my dad also went as far as to say that God needs companionship and that the reason why he created humans in the first place was for companionship was for communion he needed someone to talk to someone to be friends with and my dad was saying whenever you don't speak to God in the morning or whenever whenever you don't communicate with God you're robbing him you are the thief you've robbed him of his sweet communion with he wanted to be with you he came he called for you he looked for you and then you weren't there so just just you know if you if you make a little bit of a mind shift that God God desires me it's not just that I want him God so desires me God loves me so much I am in his heart I'm on his mind he he wants me he's attracted to me he wants to be in my presence the same way I want to be in his presence so it allows you to just put down the religious hats and it's just like okay this is grace God wants me God wants to be with me also if that makes any sense the last thing that I'll say that has helped me um, to really press in on God is using my imagination if you don't hear anything I said this entire video I hope you get this it has radically changed how I relate with the Lord and for me it came easy to me because I was always a child that was like dreaming. So there are many times when I am worshiping, I'm already closing my eyes. <laughs> Developing your imagination helps to block out this natural world. When I am talking to Jesus, really, I imagine that he's in front of me. I always do that. Or I imagine he's next to me. I do this a lot, especially when I'm driving. I remember when I first started doing this, I was 18 years old and I had to drive a really long distance to school um, because I lived at home and I was in school in college so I would drive an hour to Gainesville State and an hour back I would just see myself preaching imagination I don't know I'm serious crazy I went to school I studied psychology but I would see myself preaching like me and Jesus I would just be preaching to girls and just preaching which is weird because I didn't even know anything then <laughs> not that I know anything now but it was so bizarre but 
it was just my thing. It was me and him. And so I used to treasure when we drove. I see we when we drove because I knew, you know, it would be like another session to preach and just talk to him and like he would share things with me. Um, he'd be like, why don't you talk about this and talk about that? And sometimes I would imagine him smiling. There are times I've seen the Lord in my imagination just dancing. And I thought like, what is this? Until I saw scriptural you know, back up scriptural proofs. There's a scripture in Zephaniah that says that he will rejoice over me with singing and dancing. I also have spent a lot of time, you know, reading the book of Revelation. If you really want to know who God is, especially if you want to use your imagination to imagine his physical attributes, if you know what I mean, is I recommend reading the book of Revelations. Like it helps you understand like what his throne room looks like. Um, oh, it helps you understand like his feet, the scriptures about his feet, there's scriptures about his eyes, the Bible says they're like fire. Like, oh, and there are many times when I would read Revelations, I will go Google like those, the, the pressure stones. I'm like, whoa, it's like onyx or jasper or beryl. I'm like, whoa, what is this? So that's really all I have to say for this video. I hope this helps. I really hope it helps. I really want you to have that relationship that you crave um, with the Lord. I really do because that's the ultimate to me. This is better than going to work for me. This is better than my nights at five. This is better than anything in life. It's just being with the one who created my soul, like being with my manufacturer. He, he knows me, he understands me, and I get to be with him. I get to be in his presence. I get to smell like him. There are many times, I, I love perfumes, so I, many times I imagine what his smells like. <laughs> Oh God, I hope you guys don't think I'm crazy. <laughs> I've been doing this for a long time, so this is so normal to me. Like, I've gone as far to imagine my chair. I have a chair. I know it's crazy, but I have a chair. Like, God has made a special chair for me. I have seen it. I know exactly what it looks like. It has my name on it. I remember, like, I was just imagining heaven, and I was like, God, can I get a place that is close to your quarters? Is that possible? Can you hook a star up? And I will go as far and say, not even with being in the presence of God, even when I read my Bible, I imagine myself as the main character. Like when I read the book of Esther, I don't see Esther, Esther, can I? I see myself, I'm the one that is the queen. I'm the one that's making the declarations. I see Haman, I see Mordecai, I see King Ahasuerus, I see everything. I see the palace. The one thing, one thing that has changed and completely changed my walk with Christ was definitely using my imagination. I hope that helps and I hope that your walk with God is smooth and you guys are talking to him and he's talking to you right back and your relationship is just going wonderful. And if it's not going wonderful right now, don't worry. It will be wonderful in the end, okay? Stick, stick, stick there. Just pitch your tents there and don't move, okay? All is well. I love you so much. If you have any more questions to ask me about stuff like this, I love doing this, you can tell. Like this, I live for this. I live to do this, whatever this is. Anyways, if you have more questions, please send me a DM. Um, and you can follow me on Instagram. It's just lie on me, Grace. And yeah. Lord Jesus, I want to thank you for all my people out there, these ladies who love you, who want you and who have a heart for you. Lord, remind them that the demand is placed on you, that you want them, you want to be with them, and that you rejoice over them with singing. Remind them of your love. Remind them how much of how much you love them lord we have known and we have believed the love that you have for us we know it we believe it we trust in it we are safely anchored to your love lord and we know that you want this as much as we want this um and we bless you lord that you will show them even more ideas and more things to stay just enraptured in your presence and for that presence to travel with us for the rest of the day, for the rest of the month, for the rest of the year and that there won't be any breaks with you, Lord, and it'll be a continuous dance with you. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. I love this. I live for this. I'm telling you, I love this. Anyways, 